Hi, this is Scott Shepard of Scott Shepard Photography, Watertown, South Dakota. And this is a tutorial that will show you specifically how to set up photo streaming in Aperture. And photo streaming is part of the iCloud uh, that Apple has set up, so I guess it should be obvious up front that this is a tool that's um, intended for people who use Mac products, although you can share your photo streams with people on PCs and you can um, subscribe to photo streams on PCs as well, I believe. Um, now, incidentally, if you're looking for uh, written instructions, uh, this is the place to go. This is um, on the Apple site and it's about how to do iCloud. So you might want to po pause the video right now and copy down this URL. Now, uh, photo streaming starts with having an account on the iCloud or having an iCloud account. And the way you do that is you go to your system preferences. Now, it could be that you already have an Apple ID. If you've set up a, a, an iTunes uh, account where you can buy music, uh, you have an Apple ID. The trick, of course, is to remember what the ID is and what your password is. Uh, in my case, I already have an Apple ID. In fact, I have two, but I'm going to create a third one just so you can see what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to create an Apple ID. I'm going to fill out the information here. Uh, I'm not afraid of telling you my birthday. Yes, I am well over 110 years old. I'm going to use an existing email account. Now, Apple would actually provide you with a new email account, um, but just because I have an account. Now, this, uh, or have, have an email I can use. This email has to be unique as far as Apple is concerned. So if you've already used this email to register for an Apple ID and you've forgotten that you registered or you've forgotten how to get into it, if you try to create a new one with an old email, I don't think it's going to work. I'm not going to try to demonstrate that for you. Apple password rules are fairly specific. I believe they have to have a certain number of characters. Well, it says it right there. Passwords must be at least eight characters and include a number, an uppercase letter, and a lowercase letter. Good luck trying to remember that. I use a program called 1Password, so it keeps track of all of this for me. This is the hard part of creating an account. Creating the password for many of you isn't all that tough because you use easy ones. Uh, if you try to use ones that are hard to crack, the secret is remembering them. Uh, looks like they match. And I should not be sharing. <laughs> I should not be sharing this with you, but I'm going to do it. Um, there, Jack Nicholas, the golfer. I met him a long, long time ago. Uh, I don't want their email. Uh, I'm already getting it, I believe. Let me click next. I'm going to agree to the terms of service. This goes on for page after page after page. I trust that they're not going to take advantage of me. And now they've sent a verification email to me. Um, and so I'm going to go to email here. And I'm going to verify the email. Oh boy. Oh, it worked. It's been verified, but your account isn't active yet. To activate your account from your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, do this. But we're doing it from a Mac. Now, this tutorial is not about how, use, how to use iOS devices to do the photo stream with. So it appears that I've been successful there. And that means that I'm going to go back to System Preferences. Um, 
And there are a lot of things that I can do here. I'm going to uncheck those things right now. And the only thing that I'm really wanting to do is to click photo stream. Now, the rest of this is pretty complicated and I actually do use all of this. One thing I will point out is that you get five gigabytes of free iCloud storage, so you are limited to the number of photos you're going to be able to upload. But I'm just going to check photo stream. Uh, you can do your own exploration and learn how to use photo iCloud for all kinds of other things on the Mac, and I do that. But as I say for this, I'm just doing photos, photo streaming. I'm going to click Options. Um, automatically download new photos from iCloud and upload photos you add to your photo stream from this computer. I'm going to uncheck that one. Uh, I want to have control over what goes up to the iCloud, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, create photo streams to share with other people or subscribe to other people's shared photo streams. So let's take a look at, uh, so we're just going to leave that check and we'll figure out how to do that. And having done that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Aperture. Now, by the way, this would work in iPhoto as well, although uh, this tutorial is geared towards um, Aperture users. To turn on my photo stream in preferences so that new photos imported into Aperture will automatically be added to the photo stream and will appear on your other devices. I don't really want that to happen, to be honest with you. And I went to preferences in Aperture and um, I checked shared photo streams, create photo streams to share with other people. That's the only thing that I want right now. All right, so I'm not going to check the top one here. And I believe what will happen is that if I go to a collection of pictures, I'm going to take um, some flagged photos that I have, and I'm just going to select a few of these. And now I go up to the Share menu here and I'm going to share it to PhotoStream. It's going to ask me for a name. Um, quite honestly, um, by default it gives me a name here called Flagged. I'm going to call it um, Shared Photos. I can invite specific people to the photo stream. Uh, I'm going to invite myself through another email address. And uh, I also have the option of sharing this along with inviting specific people as a public website. So if I check that and click OK, what it does is that it takes those photos and it right, right away starts to upload them to the web. And now it's going to take a while. And ultimately, thumbnails will populate this, um, this li shared library in the photo stream. But I do want to show you that if you want to click the I button here, uh, it will give you the URL of the um, website that it's created. So I'm going to copy that. And uh, notice, incidentally, that the um, thumbnails now are populated. This is what the photo stream is going to look like to uh, anybody online or anybody that I've emailed the um, photo stream to. And if I go back to the web, and let's try this. I'm just going to open up a new tab here. And copy that URL there. There are the photos published online. Now, this is a very cool and easy way to publish photos uh, that you can share with people. Now, this is not searchable or findable in easy ways, so that your photos are fairly secure here. Uh, they are public, so they're not totally secure. And uh, the people that you shared the URL with will be able to view these. Another thing that they'll be able to do is download them. So. 
Uh, if you're looking for a secure way to share photos with customers, for example, that haven't yet bought your pictures, you may not want to use this. But for the purposes of sharing and collaboration, it's a pretty cool tool. Now, um, I'm going to try to show you what this looks like uh, in the email that gets sent. So let's go to my email. Please ignore the number of unread messages. Join Scott Shepard's shared photo stream. So this is what it looks like uh, to the person whose email you have entered in the share a blank. It says, join this photo stream, uh, or I can view it on the web. Now I'm going to tell you, and I'll show you screen captures in just a minute, that if you're joining this photo stream and you're using an iPad or an iPhone, uh, it's a very kind of cool function. I can't show you live what that looks like, but I can show you screen captures. So that's what I'm, we're going to look at next. So here are the screen captures, and here's what it looks like um, when you share your photo stream with someone else. Uh, now, I shared it with my alter ego, who is shepherd one at Mac.com. And uh, this was the email that the other Scott Shepard sent to me. Um, I clicked on join this photo stream. Uh, it added this, oops, it added this to the other uh, things that I had published or was subscribed to in my photo stream. It says right here, shared photos, shared by Scott Shepard. And uh, when I click on that, it opens up the photo stream. And that's what that looks like. And you can see these as large photos on your screen. And as far as I can tell, by the way, I don't know how to control resolution when I upload to the photo stream. I suspect that there may be a way to do that. Uh, there is also a social function in uh, the photo stream, the shared photo stream. If you look down here, you'll see a plus button. And if you click on that, you get the typewriter uh, keyboard and you can add a comment. You can even put like. It doesn't give you the option of giving you the frowning face if you don't like it. And I can, oh, I didn't mean to do, didn't mean to zoom in. Um, you can add a comment. And so that's what that looks like. Now, if I go back to, Uh, the photo stream that I shared is going to be a little bit confusing. Notice that there's a little blue bubble that shows up here. And that means that someone that I've shared this with or someone out there online has decided to make a comment on it. And if I click on the blue bubble, this is an aperture. I can see that Scott Shepard likes Scott Shepard's photo. How convenient that is. And that he says that it's a great fall photo. What do you know? And that's available for others to view, too, in the shared photo stream. So anyway, that's what this looks like on an iOS device. Now, the other thing that I should tell you is that I control this photo stream, which is to say that if I want to take something off of the photo stream, uh, I go to the photo stream in Aperture. I'm doing a right click. You could do a double tap if you're on a um, laptop, Mac laptop or um, a control click and you get the contextual menu and so I can delete a particular photo from the photo stream and that photo then will disappear from the um, photos that you have shared both online. Let's take a look at that and see if what I'm saying is true. Uh, it may take a while for that to happen but trust me uh, you do have control over the photos that are out there. So this is a basic tutorial that shows you how to set up um, an iCloud account, how to set up photo streaming in iCloud, and then how to share your photos in Aperture onto the iCloud and with friends, family, and colleagues. Anyway, thanks for listening.